You've likely heard that accelerating anything to or above light speed is impossible. Einstein's theories of relativity tell us that as an object approaches the light speed barrier, its mass will approach infinity, and it would take an infinite amount of energy to get there. But there might be a quantum loophole around this barrier. The potential method of faster than light travel discussed in this video is fundamentally different than the Alcubierre warp drive that I and others have previously discussed. That class of FDL travel gets around the relativistic obstacles through a clever trick. The craft itself does not accelerate, but instead the space around it is manipulated such that the craft sits on a space-time wave that travels faster than light. Of course, the circumvention of relativistic obstacles brings about new obstacles and it's unclear if these can be similarly sidestepped. An alternative was proposed by Takaki Musha from Japan's Shinshu University. He outlines his theory of faster than light travel in his 2017 paper, The Possibility of FTL Space Travel by Using the Quantum Tunneling Effect Through the Light Barrier. This method takes the relativistic obstacles head on. If correct, it's possible to accelerate so fast that you'd fly right through the light barrier, coming out the other end, literally traveling faster than the speed of light. Musha's theory is an incredibly interesting application of quantum tunneling, a mind-boggling phenomenon of the quantum world. We're used to things having definite positions. If I hang my keys on a hook, I expect them to remain there, but if my key ring was simply a ring of molecules sitting on a nanometer diameter hook, I shouldn't be surprised to find my keys laying on the floor some morning. On that scale, the quantum world, particles don't have definitive positions. Everything, as the fundamental principle of quantum mechanics tells us, is uncertain. But we can describe the probability of where a particular particle will be. This is what is commonly referred to as a particle's wave form. And here's where it gets interesting. If you plotted the wave form of the particles in the extremely small key ring hanging on an extremely narrow hook, you'd see that the keys would remain where they are with a very high probability. But the probability that these molecules are on the other side of that hook is not zero. Given enough time, those molecules will somehow make their way through that hook, and then gravity will do the rest and bring them to the floor. The actual mechanism for this phenomenon isn't entirely clear. It's one of those things that is simply true in the quantum world, a result of the mathematics of waveforms running into a potential barrier. Even though the particles don't seem energetic enough to travel through the barrier, the math and experimental evidence shows some will. And these quantum tunneling effects do percolate up to our world. Quantum tunneling is what allows particles to escape an atom's nucleus in radioactive decay. It's also vital for biochemistry, electronics, and fusion reactions in our sun. And it's this notion of blasting through barriers that seem impassable that Musha takes to the next level. Musha's innovation is treating relativistic obstacles, infinite mass and infinite energy, as a quantum potential barrier. Of course, we have not been able to test this out yet, but it seems to make some sense. A particle should not be able to pass over the infinite energy requirement and make it faster than light speed. But if you treat that hurdle the same as any other quantum barrier, the math shows that it's possible to start accelerating faster and faster, and then poof, you've tunneled right past that point of infinite energy and mass, and are now on the other side of the barrier, cruising faster than light. There is a catch, though. If you hope to achieve this tunneling effect, you need to accelerate at an inordinate rate, 10 to the 60 meters per second squared. The acceleration of Earth's gravity is around 10 meters per second squared, 9.8 to be exact. 
you would need to accelerate something to a novum decillion g's to achieve this effect. That's a 1 with 60 zeros. The Large Hadron Collider can only accelerate particles at a rate of 10 to the 21st meters per second squared. 21 zeros. So if we're not even close to accelerating a proton that fast, even thinking about accelerating an entire ship to that speed seems foolish. But Musha has some clever tricks of his own to get around to this hurdle. He postulates that one could leverage the zero-point energy field to create negative energy which would negate the mass of the ship. With zero or even negative mass, such violent accelerations required for tunneling past the light barrier would be possible. So again, as in the Alcubia drive and stable wormholes, negative energy seems to be key. Musha cites some familiar names in ufology in his theories for generating this exotic energy. Harold Putoff and Eric Davis. But unlike the Alcubia drive and wormhole stabilization, Musha's jump drive does not actually depend on the warping of space-time. Negative energy is not integral to the Musha jump drive, but simply a convenient way to eliminate mass and enable incredible acceleration. There are other avenues in the search for eliminating mass, essentially anti-gravity technology. One such avenue was identified by a scientist working at Boeing, Frederick Alzofan. Instead of using exotic matter to eliminate mass, Alzofan theorized that the decoherence of quantum spin within a hunk of particles is actually what gives a thing their inertial mass. If one were to somehow organize this atomic spin within the substance, mass would no longer tie you to space. Despite some purported experimental success with this theory, Alzofan's anti-gravity techniques never took hold in scientific mainstream. But that's not to say no one is looking into this idea. There's rumors of aerospace companies continuing to work on this technology, dynamic nuclear orientation, in secret. Investigations continue on the public realm as well, albeit with magnitudes less resources than the aforementioned aerospace companies. One such endeavor is led by Mark Sokol of Falcon Space. Their YouTube channel is worth a subscribe and contains very interesting experiments and ruminations on this topic. If he or anyone else successfully wrestles free of gravity's grasp, not only would it revolutionize the world of slower than light travel, but if Musha's theory is correct, it would also allow us to tunnel into the sci-fi world of faster than light travel. I am surprised Musha's ideas aren't discussed more in the UFO community, but his concept isn't without flaws, even if you do assume that eliminating the craft's mass will one day be achievable. The logic makes a lot of sense in the particle level, but just like we don't see my actual key ring tunnel through the hook on which it hangs, I'm not convinced a coherent macroscopic object could fully tunnel past light speed and we've yet to see any evidence of anything actually traveling faster than light. Also, despite being published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal, Musha's paper does contain some minor but glaring errors, and it's not without critics in the scientific community. But that doesn't mean it's not possible. Some scientists do believe that faster-than-light particles, tachyons, exist, but just have yet to be discovered. Some are even on board with the possibility of a Musha jump drive. Most notably, NASA and Department of Energy scientist and engineer Gary Bennett. In Bennett's paper, Faster Than Light Travel to the Stars, he includes Musha's work as avenues worthy of further exploration and has even explored the concept in some of his science fiction work. It certainly seems, as we explore the strangeness of the quantum world, we find more and more ways we can leverage it to impact the larger whole. Here's hoping that quantum tunneling across the cosmos is coming soon. While you're waiting, make sure you're subscribed here at Rather Be Squidding and ring that bell for video notifications. 
I'll be here following news on the Musha Trump drive, as well as any other un- and underknown stories in the world of the unexplained. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.